Welcome back to the tutorial series Line Following in Gears, brought to you by Aposteriori, the creators of Gears. I'm Yoni Garberg. In this video, I wanted to try to get you to gamify your line following algorithm creation. How do you know if one line following algorithm is better than another one? Uh, one of the best approaches we can use is just how fast does it take the robot to get from uh, the beginning of the line to the end of the line. And we can measure that just using time. And once we have that measurement, we can run various algorithms along this line. And the one that's the fastest is clearly going to be co considered the best. So in order to complete this gamification, you need to know two things. Number one, how do you make your robot stop at the end and acknowledge that this is the ending point of the challenge? And second of all, how to measure the time it took from the beginning to that point. And once you have that and you've created a measurement uh, of time for your algorithm, then you can grade each algorithm and the best solution would have the best grade, uh, the best time, the fastest time, and you can call that your, your, base, your best algorithm. Okay, let's start by figuring out how to make our robot stop at the end. Uh, in order to do that, uh, I told you last video that I would be using the GPS sensor. Now again, maybe you don't have this in your Lego uh, world, but uh, this is cool because we're using this only to gamify the algorithm. Once we have the algorithm, we don't really need to know GPS sensor coordinates or the time. We just need to have the algorithm itself. And the algorithm itself is fully Lego compatible with the regular EV3 kit. So the next step uh, would be to get this Y coordinate for the end of the line. So if we just start our two state line following algorithm, the simple line following algorithm we created in the last tutorial, we can just see uh, when it gets to uh, an endpoint. Almost there, we're at about 70 now, 80, and let's call that the end. Well, it went over, and I think the end was about uh, 90. The reason why it didn't stop when I clicked stop was because there is no point in this algorithm that says, uh, oh, if I'm not running anymore, if the execution had stopped, please stop your robot. Now we can, uh, let's assume that the uh, Y coordinate uh, my position for for this area was at 90 centimeters and uh, once we have that we can use it in our uh, while condition so instead of while true which means forever we're going to set a condition here that would actually break this loop out and that condition would be a comparison again and we can say while the y position is less than 90 Again, we'll need a math, uh, simple numerical block from the math tab. So while the y position is less than 90, do all of this, otherwise you break out. And uh, what is the actual y position? We can get that under sensors, under GPS, and we'll need to change the x to y. And oops, the last thing we'll need to do is to figure out which port is the GPS sensor on. We can do that by either going to Python here, uh, the Python panel, and seeing that our GPS sensor is bound to uh, the fourth input. Or we can look at our robot configuration and see indeed the same thing that GPS is bound to port four. So once we know that, we can change the port to be port four. And so now our robot should be able to uh, get to this point at the end of the while loop and we can tell it at that point to stop so that it doesn't fall over the edge anymore okay so now let's try this code and see if we get to the end and when we get to the end if the robot indeed um, hits the brakes And we're back and let's see we're at 90 now and the robot indeed stops at the end um, just after it passed the 90 mark 
good. So now we have a way to stop the robot. And now that we know the beginning of the game and the end of the game, we can, or the end of the run, we can now measure the time between before the loop started until the end of the loop. First thing, we'll need to record the time at the beginning. So in order to record the time, we need to be able to find what the time is, uh, the time block that returns what is the current time is under the control tab. So once we have the time, we need to save this now at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the run, to a particular variable. We can create a variable called start time. And once we create a variable, we have the set and the change and the variable, variable itself. So we can set the variable, we can change the variable by a certain amount, or we can uh, take the value of the current value of the variable. So first we want to set the start time to time when we begin to run. That simply saves what is the time at the beginning of the run. And then we'll want to do the same thing for the end of the run. So just after we've completed, we can record the end of the run. Uh, now we don't want to use the exact same variable, so we want to create a new variable called end time. And once we've created that variable, we can just find it in this list in the set function. So set end time to time, set, set start time to time, set end time to time. And now we can just calculate what is the time between these two, what is the elapsed time between these two recorded times. And in order to do that, we need to do a little bit of math. And we'll need to do a simple uh, subtraction. We'll take the end time, the, which was at the, when we finally finished the, the, the run and we'll subtract the start time from it and that will give us the elapsed time between the two. So this is elapsed time and I can create a new variable for that if I wanted to. Elapsed. Spell that right. Elapsed time. That is the time that elapsed between start to end and I'll set that to this numerical formula. End time minus start time. Okay, that's a sub subtraction sign there, the difference between end and start times. And then maybe I'll want to uh, just show that value so that we know what it is. And we can do that using the print command, and it'll come out to our uh, console. So let's print the elapsed time. If we wanted to see, do something elaborate, we can uh, add some text there. We can join some a couple of pieces of text. With something like... Um, elapsed time equals and then the time itself. Okay, and let's see what that looks like once we uh, run it. And now we'll just uh, let it run, see uh, what, what is our elapsed time. Okay, we're almost done, and we'll be expecting to see the robot stop and giving us a thumbs up Okay, and our elapsed time is now 44 seconds and a bit, 185 milliseconds, 186 milliseconds. So, uh, you know, we're happy with that. We've gotten to the end, but the game now is to try to reduce this elapsed time to a minimum. So we can try to do that by changing various aspects of our algorithm. Uh, you could be tracking further away from the edge. You could be um, increasing your speeds, you could be uh, changing the geometry of the turns, um, you know, it's, it's up to you to try various things. This is the only thing that needs to change, the rest of it is uh, just the game infrastructure. And we can uh, modularize this in the future um, to have various uh, different types of them, and we'll do that in, in the next section. Um, 
let's try this version just to see if we can get a working solution that's a bit faster. And we're back, we can see that the, uh, the turns are a bit sharper and the speeds are a bit faster and we shaved off uh, seven seconds roughly from our run. This is the uh, part where I leave it to you. Um, the next the next bit you can try other than um, changing various aspects of the two-state solution is a three-state algorithm. Uh, in the three-state algorithm, what we try to do is um, when we see the edge of the line, uh, let's call it um, the middle, between 40 and 60 percent uh, uh, light intensity returning to us. Let's call that our sweet spot, where we want to be always. And when we're there, uh, since that's our um, sweet zone, we can just tell the robot to move fast uh, forward, as fast as it can forward, uh, without losing other aspects of, of our algorithm. Uh, let's say anything less than 40, move away. Anything greater than 60, move back in towards the line. Um, so now you'll have three states one for moving away from the line, one for moving back towards the line, and one for just moving straight when we're in the middle sweet spot. Okay, I'll let you uh, try that, and uh, when we come back in the next video, I'll show you an example of that and maybe a five-state solution as well. All right, give it a try. Happy building!